575-2600. That's the number for the sports call. Bob Pompiani and Ron Cook. So let me read some of these things here. I don't. Did you hear a cue? I didn't hear anything. I don't know. Ron Polinski said on Twitter, um, I don't see the Wild trading Cullen. They're in the thick of a playoff chase right now. One point off, fourth overall. You know what, though? I think he's 41. Uh, if they believe that he's a big part of what they do, his minutes haven't been up there. Uh, you know, I know the Penguins appreciate what he can do in, in many different ways. <coughs> so we'll see. Um, there are a number of names out there. Uh, Mark Letestu's name comes up. I, I really don't think Mark Letestu would help. You know, he's gotten a lot of his goals in Edmonton on the power play. And he's Ron, a power play guy. There is no room on this power play for Mark Letestu. No, Sorry. there's not. I don't know that he would make them any better, Bob. I really don't. Um, and what would you have to give up to get him? That's always the measuring stick here. Broussard is the one guy that interests me, and it cost a fortune to get him. Would you give up a Sprong, a number one pick? Maybe no, Gustafson. See, I don't think they have because to you do have to that. take a shot now. I know. Well, tell me that they're not good enough now. I think they I are. think they're good enough too. Who in the East, if I asked to ask you right now, what team do you think? That, now there are teams like I've been talking about Boston and Tampa Bay quite a bit. I think those teams are capable, but I think no matter Tampa Bay's who pulled about, off. I think the Penguins are still a better team than what they're playing too. right now. So, yeah, too. you could add to it if you want, and I understand why if you do, because it's rare to get a three-peat. It's tough to make two in a row, but they did. So well, they won the last two years by rolling four lines. I mean, Benino not was... Not so much last year as much as the Benino year Benino was so good at the third line. Now, if you had Broussard, now you move uh, uh, Shea down to the fourth line. It'd be a hard team to deal with. It really would. I get that. But I also worry about what's going to happen two or three years from now. Okay, so I think we're having issues here. I don't see um, anybody in the uh, producer call booth. <laughs> That's where I rely on calls, and I don't see anybody over there. So I guess we'll just continue. Oh, is that the case? Well, then I apologize to everybody here because not only was an IQ to go on, but we don't have any phone action here tonight. So That's all right, Bob. We'll find a way. We'll, we'll fight our way through. So I'll just rely on Twitter a lot more, I suppose. And I apologize to those of you trying to call. Uh, I have no idea what happened there. So uh, let's see. We have Chris Coleman who says, cannot get rid of Gustafson, goalie of the future. We'll see. That's the, pr well, the problem. How's he the goalie Chris, of the future? You have, two, you have three goalies of the future. You have Matt Murray and Tristan Jari who could be here for a long time. Ten years for, I mean, 23 and 22 years old. Gustafson's 20. If you make him available, okay, I get it. That's an asset that a lot of teams would want. And Jim Rutherford told me when we met that that's the guy everyone was calling about. Right. So, Ron, if, if that's what it takes, I would be all for that because I have two guys here I can rely on. I mean, Matt Murray is your future goaltender here for a long, long, long time. And you don't need four of them. And DeSmith has done well. Uh, you know, even if you have two with Jari and, and Murray, I'm okay with that. I could see trading Gustafson. Absolutely. All right, we have Greg Ober on Twitter says, Hunwick is not cutting it. Trade for a top four D-man and depth center. Um, what are you going to give I, up? I think, I think what Hunwick, are you going to give up to get Hunwick all that? will be traded. Matt Hunwick will be traded, in my opinion. I think. What are you going to get back? A center, and it doesn't have to be Derek Broussard. What I'm saying to you, there are guys out there that fit the build that they need. If you believe Riley Shan could be a third liner, I do. And I think he's really come on. He's been really good. He's in, been great. In all the mentioned, all the aspects I talked about, not just Petty. You know, he's the number one. Uh, minute man when it comes to shorthanded killing on that power on that penalty killing unit. He gets more ice time. And than now he's else. contributing offensively. Yeah, so I mean that's exactly what you'd want someone to do in that situation. All right, let's talk more about the Pirates here because uh, they went to work first day um, and Ron, they had an outfield that looks like a platoon of um, Jordan Luplo and Adam Frazier in the left, then a Marte and Polanco, the other ones. You have Colin Moran at third, Mercer, Harrison, Bell. Cervelli. I see no power aside from Bell in this lineup at all, unless uh, Polanco like, and Marte have yeah, to hit more home. How runs. about if they don't? Well, then you have no power in your lineup. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I mean, if those guys stay healthy and play well, and that's a big if. We saw Marte get the 80-game suspension last year. We saw Polanco get hurt like 18 times. Um, now I read all this stuff about how he's training and ready to go. And I mean, we're also assuming that Josh Bell's just going to continue to get better and better. Well, he may have some uh, 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 stub his toes along the way here. It's still going to come down to pitching, Bob, and I just wonder how good that rotation is going to be. Well, I mean, you're going to rely. Like I saw today that uh, Joe Musgrove also had arm problems today. Could not They're get saying it's minor, but minor, that's but okay. 
Okay, we'll find out. So. Better now than an early <laughs> we April. We saw a sl uh, really kind of slow-moving free agent market today. However, over the weekend, Eric Hosmer was a guy who got a big deal from San Diego. Today it was J.D. Martinez, five years, $110 million. There are other guys out there available, Ron, and they, you would think they'd be less maybe than what you thought they might be in November. The Pirates need to make more moves here, will they? Do you have any reason to believe so? No, I don't. I'm, I'm saying if you're going to look I mean, at this it team, it involves spending money. Do you, do you anticipate they'll do that? No, I don't. Maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. I don't see that happening. Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, Chris Isaacs on Twitter, which is our mode of transportation here tonight. Apologies for those of you trying to call. We uh, do not have a caller or taker tonight. So Chris Isaacs says, Bob, I hate giving up number one picks, but with luring college free agents like Aston Reese. Um, what do you do with him, Bob? I like him. You just keep playing him. What, what else? You wouldn't you move him, would you? No, because he. he what, what, if this, what if Ottawa wants him for Broussard? If Jim Rutherford feels that's the best move for now, then I'll defer to his judgment. But I, I think he really. He likes, is now to me. Now here's my problem. To with me, Broussard. Aston Reese is is Hornquist next year. Okay. Hornquist is not going to be back here. How, I just don't well, see if you that get happening. Broussard, he's never going to be back here. But I don't even see him if he's back here. Even if they don't get Broussard, Aston Reese is the guy that can. Be the net fund guy. We've seen what he's done here. Rutherford has said he's the closest thing to Hornquist. I'm not moving him. I'm just not. All right. Dave on Twitter says, call it what it is. Nutting has performed like a profit grab. Hey, that's pretty much what we've seen so far. It's about winning and not necessarily what the product is. And until that changes, he's going to hear that kind of stuff uh, as well. We'll also get Guillermo Huffman who says, where does Austin Meadows fit in? That's a good question. We'll talk about it when we come back. We're due for a break right here live on Pittsburgh CW.